this was really a, probably a couple of months ago, and the Trump crew came in, and uh, one of them uh, really cornered you and was chewing you out over the whole issue, wasn't he? <laughs> Uh, what a funny. lovely event. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, uh, it was, I, mean, I couldn't stop it. It was going in slow motion and, you know, um, I just couldn't stop it. So, all right, assemblyman, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. So, um, first, uh, without, do you want to talk a little politics? Yeah, I'll talk whatever you want. Is this it's just, the, it's the political season. It is the most amazing. Uh, <laughs> let's start with presidential. All right. Um, your, uh, your thoughts on all of this. We have a big debate coming up on, on Wednesday night. Another big debate. I think it, it's crazy. This is the, the, the craziest election mm -hmm. I've seen in my lifetime. I'm sure most people would say that as well. But it's it's amazing that you could just pretty much say, and I, 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 I think I see where Trump is going with a lot of this. Yeah, I think he's yeah. seeing the writing on the wall maybe, and he's going to say, well, it's rigged. That's why I lost. It's not because of anything he did right? It's right. because or said. It's because the whole system is just rigged like it's the 1950s or 1960s Chicago. Uh, yeah, dangerous rhetoric though, yeah. um, because it is our system. It's our. It's the one thing that we hold true, and uh, that we really believe, unlike any other system in the world. Right. Ours is accurate. We go to places uh, to guarantee that they have free elections. Right. Um, because we're so good at it. And um, well, plus you want the people um, to support whoever. The, the, yeah. This is where I, I, I have an issue is. Whoever the president is, if it's Trump, I, I'm obviously a Clinton delegate. I su I'm going to support yeah, yeah. her. But if it's him, I'm going to support whoever the president is going forward because you want the president to be successful because then the country is successful. And you have this feeling that if it's her or him, whoever, that there's going to be a large segment of the, of the country that's not they're not going to accept yeah, it. And yeah. we're going to get continue the gridlock that we have in Washington where no one wants to work together. Yeah. The, you know, people don't want to work together in Washington, but we're the folks that are sending them there. So if you're you're sending these hyper partisans to Washington, you're going to get what you what you have. And that's no one working together to get things done, um, which just look at the way it's been. I mean, um, nothing gets done Absolutely. because everybody just argues and right. argues and argues. There's no chance of doing what even during the days of, of Reagan, you saw a lot of that happening. Uh, with Tip O'Neill, right? right? They work together to get stuff accomplished, right? And we don't see that today. It's all or nothing type they, of politics. They could sh go to yeah. the White House, share a drink together, laugh, yeah, and then try and get some business done. Yeah. You have this uh, situation today where they don't even like each other. They won't they talk don't to even each, like other. each other. Going dinner yeah. together is yeah. frowned upon. So it's awful. Um, I want to ask you. Um, we have listen. They they've done a nice job of demonizing. Uh, Hillary Clinton. Um, that's what happens in politics. Um, but we forget that when she and 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 believe me, I get hammered on on this. I'm not a Hillary fan. I I wish they would have chosen somebody else. I wish the Republicans would have chosen somebody I'm the same else. Same boat as you. But at the end of the day, um, Hillary Clinton was a was a pretty popular senator. Here in upstate New York. She was here a lot. Yeah. I remember her coming to Utica and Rome quite frequently when she was a senator. She didn't have to. You know, a lot of people felt that she wasn't going to, she was just doing this as a placeholder until she ran for president. Yeah, yeah. She was here for eight years. She was always here, whether it was talking about Griffiths and, and the labs, trying to protect that or other issues in the area. She always came here and worked very well with other Republican members in the Senate, whether it was John McCain or Lindsey Graham or whoever, she always reached across the aisle. I was watching a, a special on her over the weekend. They had one about Trump and her on CNN. And, and one of the first things she did when she became a senator, she joined a Republican prayer group just to try and cross the aisle. And these are a lot of the senators who were impeaching her husband not too yeah, long ago. Yeah. So the, you know, it's, it's, I think she, she wants to try and work together with other people. But you're right. We're in a, we're in election season where everything has become so toxic, and we're in the job of each party now is to demonize the other candidate yeah. to the point where everyone is just uh, completely disgusted with them. Well, we're seeing that on the congressional side as well. Same thing um, here. In, what in, are your uh, What are your thoughts? This seems to be very close. It's very close. Yeah. I know there's been some polling done that shows it's very close. I think uh, I think having Babinick in the race, Martin Babinick in the race, is certainly the wild card. Uh, from what I understand, he's drawing a lot of support away from Claudia Tenney locally in the United County area on the Republican side. I don't know that, we, that we've ever had a, um, a third-party candidate in double digits like this. I don't uh, think like so. This. I don't think so. And he's polling around 20 or more percent, yeah. which is very large. Yeah. Uh, so it depends. I think this is a—anything that happened this year with the, with the race— and I, I think I could see a situation where the uh, the Democrat could win it because he's drawing a lot of support away from uh, the Republican nominee. 
I remember about a month or so ago, we had talked about the candidates in this race. You were undecided. Going back about two weeks now, you came out and endorsed Kim Myers. What what made your decision? I've met with Kim a, a number of times. We probably first met back in February. We sat down at Cavallo's, actually, to talk a little bit about the race. Uh, and I think over the, over the last year, she's really grown as a candidate. Uh, she has shown that she's someone who is going to represent all areas of the district uh, the same. She committed to opening a district office, which she said was never a question in her mind in the Utica. In Utica. So this area of the district is well represented. Uh, and when I look at a candidate, there's two things I'm looking for in, 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 a congr- in a congressional member. One is someone who has the right temperament to go to Washington uh, to do the right thing. And another is someone who's willing to work together. And I think she's someone who has proven through her past record, but also the rhetoric that she uses on the campaign trail, that it doesn't matter to her who's uh, who's on the other side of the aisle. She wants to work across the line and get things done. And I think her positions are very moderate on all the issues, which is what this district is. It's yeah, not yeah. a super left district. It's not a super right district. It's a district that uh, Obama only lost by, a, by less than a percentage point back in 2012. So I think people in this area don't want hyper-partisans uh, representing them. They want people in the middle just like a Sherry Bullard or Mike Arcuri or Richard Hanna. Uh, they want people like that who are going to represent the area and get things done. Constituent services is what they care about. That's a big thing. When, uh, when, when, when they do polling on, on congressional, on congressmen, um, Americans hate Congress. Right. But they seem to love their congressmen. They love their congressmen. Yeah, because, and it's really about constituent services, right? right? It is. That's <laughs> when the, somebody's in trouble, they, have help, they need help for something, uh, they reach out, and that office... Is there? And the same thing on the state level. Exactly. I think that's the most important part of my job is when someone calls and, and they have an issue, we get back to them and we try and work on their issue. Yeah. If I don't call people back or I don't email people back, I'm going to hear about it and they're going to tell their friends and family. And that's, that's the quickest way not to get reelected. So you got to work on the constituent issues. That's the biggest part about the job. Do you, uh, is there any regrets um, as you're watching this now? No, not really. Not really. You know, when I, and I, and I should set up for those that don't remember, um, there were a lot of people that thought you were going to run for, for Congress. Right. Or, no, and I really don't have any regrets, and that's something I, I wondered when I was when I said no. Am I going to regret it down the road? But look, my daughter turned six yesterday. Uh, I'm coaching soccer. I'm going to my son's baseball games. You would not be doing any. I would of that. not be doing any of that right no. now. They would not even see me right now, especially yeah. in this last few months of the election. So yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to miss an opportunity to see them grow up, and I get to do a, a lot of good for the area, anyways. I think you can do. I said it back then. You can do right now because of the way politics is a lot more on the state level to mm-hmm. help your local community than you can in the federal level. Can I ask you um, down the road? Eh, down the road, I, I would consider it, absolutely. Um, we got to see where I am at that point yep. in time. Yep. But right now I'm very happy with the work we're doing in the Assembly, and uh, I hope we can get more things done for our area going forward. Well, it's being called potty parity. Potty parity. Let's talk about that. Yes. So uh, this is really a, a push, uh, some legislation that we're drafting to require um, baby changing stations, diaper changing stations in men's bathrooms. You know, if you go out into public buildings, and this yeah. is for public buildings, so mm-hmm. state, municipal buildings, if you go into these bathrooms, you'll, you will not find, in many instances, diaper changing stations in a men's bathroom. They're in the women's bathroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think traditionally the role is well, the woman's going to change the diaper, so we'll put the diaper changing station in that bathroom. Right. But you have a situation now where over the years the role of the father has changed. You have many single fathers, and there's no reason why they shouldn't be in the men's bathroom yeah, as well, yeah. just for convenience. And this is not something we're mandated, mandating uh, all these municipalities or the state to go back and retrofit. We're saying for new construction of bathrooms. Okay. Yep. They're one hundred and fifty dollars, two hundred dollars. These diaper changing stations. It's, yeah, they're not, it, um, not expensive. Yeah, they're not expensive units. Put them um, in the men's room as well as in addition to the women's room, and or if it's a, a substantial renovation to a bathroom, so over ten thousand dollars of a renovation to a public bathroom, you'd have to put them in. So it doesn't seem like a big stretch to me. And you know, if you've been in some of the situations I've been in where you're changing diapers in all kinds of crazy locations, I gotta tell you, you're, you'd appreciate you, a diaper changing station in the men's room. It is very difficult because you're laying them down on the floor. It is almost the only option that you that you have in a men's room, and and, once, and it's difficult. Once um, that uh, that potty is made, you got to get yeah. that diaper off quickly. Yeah, otherwise, you you're going to be dealing with some diaper rash, and that's even worse. Um, and are you? Uh, I mean, are you hearing? First of all, you're taking away the excuse that guys have had for many years. It's like <laughs> they don't have a changing station in there. You're going to have to well, do it. One guy con- jokingly contacted me and said, "Thank. You. Now that my kids are older, I wholeheartedly support this yeah. legislation." <laughs> <laughs> that is the uh, that is the case. But again, it's a different world today. Father's playing a different role. Right. Just assuming that it's always the woman that is uh, that's doing these things right. is the 
is the wrong assumption. So, again, how does this affect small businesses? How does it, it doesn't affect it? It doesn't. It's, it's for public buildings, public restrooms, uh, and it's only on new construction or a substantial renovation over $10,000 to a bathroom. So, yeah. I don't think it's overly burdensome. And the most of the support, I, uh, most of the feedback I had is overwhelmingly supportive. I think we had a couple of people saying, what, you have nothing better to do with your time? Look, I wish I had more time to yeah, work on all yeah. the things I'm working on. This, to me, is not a small issue. It's a big issue, and it's mm-hmm. important to a lot of families. You had said of public buildings again, clarifying this is government buildings? Same government buildings. Yeah, right. okay. And again, they're not overly, I mean, these are relatively inexpensive. I mean, you can see them the way they're made. Yeah, it's not Google like them, I mean, $150, yeah. $200 to purchase right. these things. Uh, so how does this process move forward? Uh, do you see it moving forward? And Yeah, so we, we introduce a legislation uh, in January when we go back into mm-hmm. session and then trying to work together, uh, finding Senate sponsors on the other side to try and get the bill passed and hopefully uh, move forward. They just, uh, the president just signed a law on the federal level requiring these diaper changing stations in, in men's bathrooms. And uh, I think there's no reason why they shouldn't be here in New York State as well. You know, when women hear the label potty parody, they think about going to the auditorium, <laughs> long lines, not as many uh, women's bathrooms. Well, look, that's, the odd was, uh, was uh, built in a, a time when yeah. men, many women did not go to sporting events, so they did not put as many uh, yeah. women's bathrooms at the odd. But Look at women uh, in many instances like sports just as much as men do. So uh, why not have equal treatment? Uh, and and from what I'm hearing too, there's plan down the road to to rectify that problem at the that's at one the of their, auditorium. That's one of their big needs. That's some yeah. you know we've worked them a lot over their last couple of years on construction needs, and that's one of them is trying to find uh, more space for women's restrooms. You go to any hot comments or hot or UC yeah. game, you see the long lines uh, yep. around the women's bathroom. All right, last uh, quickly, last issue: um, hospital nanotechnology. Everything moving forward. Where do we stand? Uh, obviously, people are antsy. Yeah, on, both ho- on the hospital front, uh, the, the hospital system really not, is right now waiting for some documentation, some paperwork to come from the New York State Department of Health uh, to fill out so they can access the $300 million that's been appropriated for the new hospital. Uh, they're working they're, to hire some architects and engineers to give the people some more uh, answers to some of their questions about the building and the construction and, and whether the hospital uh, can can go downtown. Remember, that's their preferred site. They have yeah. a backup site at St. Luke's. Um, and on the nano front, things continue to move forward. Uh, obviously, all the uh, the news lately of Kelly Uros and uh, indictments or complaints and certainly and hasn't helped. Has not helped, no. and that's the one thing that we're trying to do now uh, on the state level is to reassure companies like AMS that uh, we we're moving forward and this is not a uh, going to slow your process down. And we want to continue to work with you right. to come to the site here in Marcy. Uh, Assemblyman Anthony Berdizzi, thanks so much. Thank you.